Good morning. It's the 10th of September and today I'm taking a heather over the Pennines to go to Golden Acre Park in Leeds. That's where the UK National Daily Society holds its trials of dailies to see which ones of, the, of them will be suitable for exhibition. Those of you who've seen our previous videos will know that I often seek out new varieties and I'm looking for dailies that have got perfect form like this one, Westertonella Grace. Clearview Cameron. Holly Hill Chloe. And Shep's Memory. On the other hand, at the end of the season, I weed out varieties that have gone open centred like this one. Fade in the sun like this one. Or have floppy stems like this one. I'm hoping that when I go to the trials, I'll see some varieties that I want to try in my own garden in the future. Along the way to Leeds, we picked up Heather's dad, who always comes with us on this journey. Before we got to Golden Acre Park, we stopped off at Murgatroyd's Fish and Chip Emporium. Yorkshire's famous for its fish and chips, and Murgatroyd's is probably the best place there is to go. And it's only about five miles from Golden Acre Park, so we always stop here. Here's my plate of battered fish, chips, and that Yorkshire delicacy, mushy peas, as a Yorkshireman would say. Here lad, get it down thee. So, here we are at Golden Acre Park. It's actually a very big park. And the trial gardens only take up a small corner. As you can see from this board, the trials have been going on in this park since 1985. And the first winner was White Moonlight, which wins prizes even to this day. I think it's fair to say that I've tried most of these varieties in my own garden and they still grow some of them. I still grow Grenadier Pastel. I still grow Jamanda. I still grow Hillcrest Kismet, Mary's Jamanda, Shep's Memory, Western Stardust, Jasudi Aurora and the one I want to try is Rossendale Donald. Those of you who saw my video from the trials last year might remember me seeing Rossendale Donald for the, fourth, for the first time and I decided there and then it had to be in my garden. Well, Halls of Hedden are going to have it on, uh, on uh, sale this coming year so I'm desperate to get one. Having seen them all, the one I saw first was the best one. Rossendale Donald, that's the one I really want in my garden. And these are the trial beds themselves. Now it's fair to say that this year has been particularly difficult. We had the hottest June on record, then the wettest July on record, and now we're having the longest ever heat wave in September. It's 32 degrees today. And I would say that at first glance, these varieties are all looking really good. The National Daily Society has got a team of very dedicated members who, co who come here once a week from all, all across the north of England to help maintain the garden, keep the, the, the flowers looking perfect, just as they would be grown if they were growing them for exhibition in a show. So I'll talk you through as I'm going round. There are always some colorette varieties and they've never yet won a prize in these trials, probably because there are very few classes in shows for colorette dahlias. This is a lovely colour, it's called Barbary Surprise. I'm not sure why that in the middle of all the uh, ball and miniature decorative varieties there's this red water lily variety called Natalie de Liederk. 
Nice colour. But I'd rather have this one in my garden. Bottisford Jim Bob. Wow, what a name. Um, that's pretty impressive. This is one of Les Tothards, who grows all the blighting varieties. This one's called Blight and Ermine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bottisford Ruby is a nice dark purpley colour. I think I prefer this one as John Twyella. Another funny name. This one's called Iona. There aren't many in bloom. But the ones that have been in bloom, two of them have gone open centred quite soon. Blight and white gold. I don't know why it's got gold in it. Has it got a tip gold? I can't see a, a gold tip. This one's Westerton Billy Boy. Fantastic form. It's a very similar to a very a larger Westerton Ella Grace, I would say. It's probably come out of the same parents. This one's called Seville, possibly because it's orange, like a Seville orange. And this is the third white Blighton variety, it's called Blighton White Star. As I look round, I've just realised that there's not a single cactus or semi-cactus on display at all, which is very unusual. This one's Blighton Bellero. Loads of petal, but it might a little be a, a little bit top heavy. Now here's one from Barry Davis, the Barbary man. It's called Barbary Ballerina. I'm rather taken with this one. This one's called As John Honeycomb. Now I'm not a judge myself, and I'm certainly not judging these trials, but I guess that one of the things that the judges will be looking for is uniformity. Uniformity of colour and size. And as you can see, this one nearest the camera is darker than that one, and it's also larger. So I would guess that, that, that score-wise it would count against it. This is Barbara Lace. Unfortunately, the whole crop seems to have gone open-centred. Now it could, have, it could be because of the hot conditions because this one, Rossendale Bonus, has done the same thing. And quite a few of this one called Jade are similar. And the, the stems on this don't stand to, seem to be standing up to the weather. Now anemone varieties are becoming very trendy and popular. This one's called Annette's Dream. I've got one quite similar, it's called Totally Tangerine. It doesn't have as much petal, but I like the colour on this one. Heather likes these anemones, I'm not too keen myself to be honest. This yellow, pale yellow, is called Judas Love. I don't think it's got enough petal to uh, compete. Last but not least is this one, Blight and Purple Plain. I would guess that it will be considered to be quite clock-faced and that would count against it. It's uh, the, the flowers that are at 90 degrees to the stems. Now the larger flowered varieties are always grown under cover, which is how uh, top growers will grow them themselves. They will protect the blooms from the rain, etc. I've always thought that these, these ones in here are at an advantage over the ones outside, but what do I know? Eastwood Essex is a good dealer. I know that it's been winning prizes already. For those of you who like the fimbriated varieties or laciniated as they say in the USA, this one's called Laura Christina. I suppose it's quite nice, but I don't like them in my garden because they tend to go straggly, they go dirty at the back. And when the rain gets on them, they tolls all the rain and they fall over. So I've given up with fimbriators in general. Kilburn Stars, a nice semi-cactus. Good, good strong stems. Kingsley Glynis is quite nice.
but from my from my own garden perspective I've got quite a few that look quite similar to this new new field allen nice flower but one or two of them have tended have gone a little bit clock faced now this one's called our mum I rather like this one but looking at all the all the blooms they've all got a little tinge of white on the some one or two of the petals which spoils the effect unfortunately well I have to be honest I'm a bit disappointed because there are no cactus or semi cactus varieties in here which are my favorite types anyway can't win them all unlike last year there is no obvious favorite about which variety is going to win I would say though just having a, gl a glance around my money's on the Barbary the white Barbary we'll see the results don't come out until November so I've got a long time to wait as you can see the National Chrysanthemum Society have their trials here as well Anyway, I think the family enjoyed it. 